So how to create an awesome online course in 60 minutes. Thank you everybody for being here. And uh, you want, probably want to grab some pen and paper um, because there's a lot of information that is going to be coming to you like a fire hose, my friends. And uh, you may be overwhelmed. It's okay. 60 minutes to explain what I'm going to explain is probably going to be not enough. Uh, or maybe because I'm not sure. Turn your cell phones off. Don't get distracted and stuff, right? Because <clears throat> if you do, then you'll be able, you probably miss some crucial information that is going to be very important for you in order to create online courses, right? Now, first of all, are you excited? Because this is the first webinar ever for Grumo. Boom. I am super excited because I love to do new things. And this is a new thing. I've been the last three months doing a lot of new things. And this is one of them. So what am I going to teach you? What it takes to be a successful online instructor. How to break down your knowledge into an outline. All the software and hardware required to record your courses. How to record, edit, and upload your lectures. Self-hosting versus course marketplaces. How to get your first students in 60 minutes. And then if we have some time, um, I'll be happy to answer any of your questions, Q&A. And of course, if you stay till the end of the webinar, I have a gift for you. So you want to stick to the end. I know some of you probably have to go because of work or whatever. Uh, but for those that stick, which I know who you will be because go to webinar is going to tell me it's that smart. I will know I'll give you a present. Before we start, I just want to give you a little bit of background story on, on, on myself. If you haven't, if you don't know who I am and you're wondering why the heck am I listening to this guy, it's always good to, want to know who is the person behind uh, on the other side of, 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 the, of the world or of the camera. So my name is Miguel Hernandez, and uh, I've been teaching on Udemy and on my own for almost five years. I got nine courses, 18,000 students. So uh, I was one of the originally Udemy instructors, um, but I'm extremely happy with the platform. Uh, things are changing dramatically with Udemy, so people need to adjust. They need to learn other uh, strategies. And what I've been trying to do is learn great uh, marketing strategies in the last three months, and, and, and this is part of the whole process. Right. Also, you can see a bunch of logos here in the background. These are clients of mine, of Grumo Media, my company. We've been created explainer videos or marketing videos for all these companies and hundreds of other companies. And it's been a hell of a ride. It's been super fun. Right. So if you want to know more, more about myself, just type Miguel Udemy or Miguel Grumo Media, and you'll be able to have a lot of information about myself. I was born in Spain. I came to Canada 20 years ago and when I was 19 years old, which makes me almost 40. 40 in my head, I'm about uh, 12 or 13, but in, in the body, uh, I'm supposed to be 39. Uh, and so let's get on this. Why do you, the first question is like, you're here. I imagine you want to create an online course. Uh, course. My question is, why do you want to create an online course? Start always with the why, because if you don't know the why, then you, you're not going to go in the right direction. So the first thing is, I always, let's, let, let's, let, let's make this a binary decision, right? You're either doing this because you want, because you love it and you want to create an impact. You want to touch people's lives with your knowledge across the world, which you can do nowadays with online teaching, or you're going to do this because of the money. All right. I'm not going to tell you which one is better or not. Money is a great motivator, right? Money makes us get up in the morning and go to our crappy jobs and work for many hours. Also, get, get gets us excited about many things. But I'm going to tell you, creating online courses is a craft. And do, do them well. It takes time and a lot of effort. And if you're just doing it for the money, trust me, you're going to suffer, right? I originally did it because I was very curious and I like to teach, but I also was very excited about the money part, right? And I did, I've done very well and, I'm, and, and, and it was, it's been amazing. I wanna keep doing this. But what has, what has really 
uh, made a, 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 a difference in my life is the impact that I've been able to have on those 18,000 people. Not all of them, obviously, but I hear stories every day of people that have taken my courses, maybe an animation course, and they started their own animation studio, maybe my how to create an awesome online course. And, and for the first time in their life, they were able to make, make extra cash. Like last year when I went to Spain and I met 12 of my students there, they all had amazing stories of how learning these new skills, like this photographer, right? In Spain, the economy is really crappy. He was making about a thousand euros a month, and that year alone, he had made fourteen thousand euros selling courses on on photography. And he and he did that, so he made the same salary in one year selling online courses after taking my course. And he was so glad. And stories like that is what motivates me to spend hours creating these courses, right? And why I'm why am I doing this today? Is because I want to make sure you can I can have an impact on you, and that you can have impact on other people. Having said that, I think impact should be number, the number one reason why you want to create an online course. And of course, money, it's also important, right? So to be able to have an impact and make money, first you have to know what it takes to be a successful online instructor, all right? And uh, there are many, many variables. And unfortunately, uh, when you take online courses or people teach you how to create online courses, they're only showing you a little piece of the whole picture of what it takes to be successful. Creating the online course is just one part, right? And the big picture really, it's you, an instructor, uh, with some knowledge, you're gonna package it in a course and you're gonna try to reach students, right? And, and, and teach them something, right? So you and your course is the product, the students is the market, product market. Now, the main issue here is that for you to make, be able to make a, a difference, you have to be able to attract those students, reach those students, right? Uh, so you're going to provide value, you're going to make money in return, but you have to be able to reach these students. And for that, you need marketing. So there's basically four main variables and the, all four must work. If they don't, you're not going to be successful. So if you just thinking that by creating a course, uh, it doesn't matter how good it is, you're not going to be successful. And let me just tell you what's uh, here. So we're going to today, and this is the thing, today I'm focusing on course creation. But remember that it's just one part of the equation, actually a very small part of the equation to be successful, right? And I want all of you to be successful. So it's very important that you listen to this, right? So you, your course marketing and the market, the outcome, right? If you're a bad instructor, uh, you're boring or you're not passionate about teaching, it, it's unlikely you're gonna do a good course, it, even if you're really good at marketing and if you have a market, if there's students, right? The same thing, if you're a really good teacher but your course sucks, doesn't matter if you're really good at promoting it or there's students that wanna take it because it's gonna be a failure. If you're a great instructor, you have a great course, but you don't know how to reach your students, which happens to a lot of great instructors, you're gonna fail as well. If you're a great instructor, you have a great course and you have great marketing, but nobody wants or cares about your course, you're gonna to fail to, right? All four factors, you course marketing and market have to be good in order for you to succeed, right? Now let's talk about what it takes to be successful or what makes all of these four things uh, successful. What are the variables, right? So for you, 10. And there are many others, but I chose the 10 main variables that I think that will make you a successful instructor. And if not if any of them don't work, your chances of success are gonna be lower, right? You must have passion for teaching. If you don't like teaching, if you don't like to stand in, behind a camera for hours, delivering your knowledge, you're gonna fail. If you don't care about the subject and you're just teaching it because you think this is a subject that is hot or trendy, you're gonna fail or you're gonna suffer but you cannot, because you're not doing something that you love. If you try to teach something you don't have experience on, you're gonna fail. You have to get, gather the experience. If you don't have any teaching skills, you may be very passionate about teaching but you suck about teaching because you, you, you're, you're, you're don't deliver, you don't show passion where you're teaching, you don't know what it takes to teach people, you're gonna fail. If you don't know how to create a course, you're gonna fail. If you don't know how to market your course, you're gonna fail. If, if you don't have any credibility, people are gonna be like, why should I listen to you? It's gonna be hard for people to listen to. 
if you don't have an existing audience, it's going to be hard. If you already have an audience in social media or you have a list, it's going to be a lot easier for you to get started. If you, if you don't have this, you, start, you have to start working on it right away. If you don't have a network, if you don't have mentors that you look up to or that can help you, if you're not well connected or you don't have contacts that can help you, it's going to be hard. And if you don't have a team, you know, I mean, at the beginning, it's really unlikely you're going to have a team, right? But eventually, if you want to grow past the six-figure mark uh, a year, you're going to need people that help you. You're recording or uploading or doing marketing or tech or design, right? Right now, actually, we're hiring a team to do marketing for our new course that is upcoming up, right? And we're spending a lot of money because if we were trying to do that ourselves, it would take way too long, right? At the beginning, you won't have a team, but having a team is really, really important. Now, what is your score from one to 100? Give, you know, for each of these factors, give yourself zero to 10, right? The closer you're to 100, the more likely that you can be a successful instructor. But it's not just about course, course creation skills, right? Now, for a, a course to be successful, are you, are you, uh, is it well structured? Is it easy to consume? Does it have additional resources? The course platform, is it easy to use? It has the right features? Is it has beautiful design? Is it can integrate with, with uh, other software or payment systems? Is it priced correctly? Do you offer payment plans? Is the title have been tested, right? Do you have great copy and design? So copy in online is so, so important. Can you create a sales page that is convincing, that, that, that gets people to buy? Have you recorded a promotional video that is high quality, convincing, and converts well? Do you have testimonials that can show proof of your results? Can your students get help from other peers? Do you support, do you give one-on-one -on -one support over the phone, help and advice on top of just your course? You have guarantees like, like a refund policy. All of these things are important. What's your score when you create a course, right? Hopefully it's very high, I hope. Now, marketing sex is viable. So there is also, do you, can you get traffic to your course? Do you understand what a funnel is? Which, you know, do you have a high converting funnels in place? How, are you building a, and collecting an email addresses? Are you automating and building trust and selling using 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 email automation? Are you leveraging and, and growing your social media? Are you generating high quality content regularly with content marketing? Do you know how to generate high quality paid traffic? Do you have an affiliate program? Have you developed a strong relationship in your industry? Are you tracking everything, conversions, open rates, expenses? Marketing is a huge part of being successful online. And a lot of people disregard it, don't understand it. And if you don't understand this piece, forget it. You're not going to be successful. Boom. What's your score right here? And finally, market. It doesn't matter if you know marketing and your course is awesome, if there's not an actual market. Have you studied your market? Is it, do the actual people want, want what you offer? Is it growing or is it going? Is, is it something that's exciting as artificial intelligence or or drones or uh, virtual reality or augmented reality stuff that is really growing? You know, if you start today, in the next five years, people the, the demand for it's going to be great. Is there competition? You actually want competition to exist, right? Because that validates the market problem. Are you really solving a real a real world problem? Do you know what results your potential students want to obtain? Do you know the demographics, geographic, psychographics, behavior, behavior, right? The lifestyle of the people. Do you really have an idea of the customer avatar? You do, do you know exactly who are the people that would love to learn from you? Finally, do you know where they hang out online? What do they like? You know, what because this is very important because when you want to, let's say you do uh, advertising, you really need to know who's your target market. If you don't, you're going to waste so much money on ads. It's not even funny. So you must get this stand right in order to be a successful online instructor, right? Basically, what I'm telling you is that today I'm just teaching you course creation skills. That is only 5% approximately of what it takes to be successful, right? So... Don't think you're going to create a course and you're going to be just selling it by, you know, make, make $100,000 the first year unless you figure out all the other moving parts or you hire people to figure out all the other moving parts. Creating a course is fun, but it's just one part of the equation. And that's the part I'm going to try to cover right now. By the way, this is actually uh, a course that originally is 10 hours long. <laughs> I'm just cramming a bunch of stuff in, in one hour. So hopefully you're taking notes. 
and uh, having lots of fun. All right. So online production stages. The first thing you're going to have to do is research your topic. I'm, I'm sure you know some of it, but it's important to just refresh your knowledge. And then you're going to create an outline based on that. You're going to create the presentation slides. You're going to record the lectures, edit the lectures, encode the lectures, upload the lectures. Recording and all of this stuff is, is, is quite a bit of work. And then you're going to add titles and descriptions, create a sales space, create a course thumbnail, record a promo video, create quizzes, create worksheets, create a certificate. Now certificates are, uh, you know, people are really like to get certificates because it really incentivizes them to finish the course to get that piece of virtual paper. And you got to set a price. All of these things take time. They have to be done right. Today, we're just going to focus on from two to seven uh, because there's not really time to go over all the other things. Uh, so we're going to focus on that. Let's go. Boom. Is everybody here? Are you guys listening? Are you just, are you enjoying this? Come on. This thing can change your life. It has changed my life. Creating all online courses is, it's, it's a tremendously fast growing market, online education. And trust me, you want to get on it as soon as you can. Learn it, love it. Uh, and if you don't love it, don't do it because you're going to suffer. <laughs> but I hopefully, anyways, moving on, moving on. Creating your course outline. This is, I enjoy this part a lot because it's like when you come up with ideas for, for, for startups or companies or apps, all you have to do is write down stuff, right? And, 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 and think how you're going to change the world from, from your keyboard. Uh, but basically, this is how it works. Uh, before you create the outline, you have some knowledge in your brain. You, you're going to do some research. Uh, you have some experiences. Uh, this is called empirical knowledge. So you've actually experienced this or you've just learned it through books, through seminars, through whatever. That knowledge is going to help people get results. Now, before you create the outline, very important to think what is the impact that you want to have? And it has to be very specific. Do you want to teach people how to create courses? Do you want to teach people how to create uh, an animation? How to, how to dominate... Uh, you know, a software, a specific software. You want to make sure that you understand really what the results you want to get in people, right? And I don't know if that's proper English, but uh, my English sucks, okay? Sorry, it happens when you are a foreigner, but you know what I'm talking about. Think about the results. Now, once you've, you've done all the research and all of that, this is where the brain dump or a, a downloading happens. And it, it is, this, is, this is one of the miracles of nature that we are able to do that. And we can actually package our knowledge into a digital format and change people's lives. That is amazing, my friends. So what you're gonna do, you, you're gonna list all the possible lectures, everything that you can about, about that specific topic. Always in mind, ask yourself, is this actually helping me or is gonna help me get the, help my students get the results that I want. Then you're gonna group all these lectures into modules and sections, right? You can do it the other way too. Sometimes you're, you're, you think, you know, like, okay, these are the main steps to get there and I'm gonna break, in that, break all of those steps into, into chapters or lectures, right? Either or works, but this is the process. Grouping and listing, right? Now, on top of that, once you've created all your modules and list all your, all your lectures, you want to enhance the course uh, based on feedback, ideally, uh, with worksheets, create frameworks, case studies, quizzes, bonuses, all of that. We're creating a new course uh, right now, and, and I'm going to tell you about it later. And we've on our bonus sections, we've brought some of the top experts in marketing in North America, at least. And... It's awesome because if people want to dig further, now they can take those bonuses materials and enhance their experience, right? Always with results in mind. So the reality is like, uh, these online courses usually don't take, you know, uh, 100 hours to take. The average course is anywhere from four to six hours. So think what can you teach in four to six hours of content that will get your students from A to B in the most efficient way. So anything that is not helping them to get to that very specific goal B should be removed because this is about getting your student from A to B in the most efficient way and in four to six hours. What can you teach in four to six hours that can make, make a huge difference in people's lives, right? 
next. Uh, to give you some ideas, and I, I uh, because people are like, well, how long should be my course? How many lectures should I have? Uh, what is the average course? How much money can I expect making about the course? How much should I charge for my course? All these crazy questions that make a lot of sense when you're starting now. I'm going to give you some range, ranges and, uh, and also what some numbers for the average course, right? So when you're creating your outline, typically it's going to have from four to eight modules, four to 10 lectures per module, 20 to 80 lectures, five to 20 minutes per lecture, four to eight hours of work per hour of video. Okay, this is very important, my friends. If your course is an hour long, it doesn't mean it's gonna take you allow an hour to make. It's gonna be probably four, eight, ten times more work work in order to get that hour of video, right? And we'll go exactly about what I'm talking about later on in the presentation. And by the way, make sure you stick to the end because there's a gift for you. And uh, how can you charge per hour? Typically, anywhere from five to a hundred dollars per hour. And this is also a very important topic to understand in order to know how to price your course, how much you can charge per hour of content, of video content. When, and I'm assuming that most people that create online courses today, they do it by in delivering mainly video, a video presentation, right? So this so at the end when you all add all this up the typical course is one to 20 and 20 hours long and it can take between four and 160 hours of work not including marketing and you can charge anywhere from 20 to two thousand dollars right so the average course can have it usually has five modules five lectures per module 25 lectures the lectures are about 20, uh, 10 minutes long and they could be longer. I'm just talking about averages here. And it takes about six hours of work to create one hour of video. And you ideally, in a perfect world, should be able to charge around $50, $50, 50 per hour of video. This means that the typical course is about four hours long. It takes about 25 hours to, to create and you could charge $300 for it, right? That's not bad. Now, this is only if you're self-hosting. If you're using a marketplace, charging this amount of money, it's getting harder and harder every day as we're experiencing quickly what is called a democratization of online education. So if you want to be able to charge more than, than what you can, people usually pay on marketplaces, you have to get really good at marketing. So how many sales do you need to recoup your investment? Well, let's say that you pay yourself $50 an hour and you spend 24 hours doing the course times $50 per hour. You need to make at least $1,200 in sales in order to recoup your investment. Now, if you divide that by $300 per course that you sell, you need to do four sales only. And this seems fantastic. You can get four sales and after that, everything is money, is profit. Yes, more or less. It depends if you can sell them for $300. And first, you, can, you need to get those four sales. But getting four sales, let's say, in, in, in a couple of months, it's actually something that almost 90% of the world should be able to do. And the beauty of online courses is that after that, you can start thinking about what everybody loves, which is passive income. I'm gonna tell you something, in the last five years, I made almost the same amount of money selling online courses that working my ass off creating videos. But I I put a hundred times more efforts trying to run a service-based company than selling online courses. That's something that is really exciting, <laughs> trust me. Pretty amazing. Okay, next. Uh, creating your online course outline. So this is an outline, boom, boom, boom. It's just a document. And I would start this way, write down the goal, what, how you're gonna deliver it, uh, what's the price that you have in mind, and then write down the five or seven modules, the title of the module and the description of the module, just to give you an idea. This is, if this is how I'm doing it for my new course, right? And that way I have an idea and then I can break it down. What I do, and I love to do this, and I, and I really recommend that you do that, is that once you have that, to track your progress, open a Google Sheet, spreadsheet, or use Excel, whatever you want, and on the top row, list your chapters, modules, whatever you wanna call them, and be under each heading of each column, so that's then the, oop, let me go back, uh, 
So here, then you list all your lectures. Then I'm, I use color coding. And you can, the beauty of this is that you can see your entire course here and you can see the progress. So every time I finish a course, I just, a lecture, I just mark it in a different color. In this case, I'm using orange. And then I know what have I accomplished and what do I have left to be accomplished, to record. I've been using this for all my courses and I think it's great. You could use uh, project management software. Uh, the thing is that you won't be able to see your entire course easily. And in, in, an, in, an, in a Google sheet like this, you get to see your entire progress once you've laid out your outline. And you can always edit, delete, just work on it as you keep creating the course. Right. Perfect. Now let's get into the actual tools of the trade that we online instructors use. And the beauty of, of this is that today we live in a very unique time where technology allows us to create courses with just a laptop or a, that has a webcam and two pieces of software, Keynote or ScreenFlow, if we're uh, if we're using a Mac, uh, and this is this is the the most basic solution. You could go for free presentation software or free recording screen recording software, but really, if you are serious about this, I suggest you invest on a laptop. Doesn't have to be a Mac because Macs are very expensive, I know. Uh, and but I just love them. I've been using them for the last eight years, and they work fantastically well. Keynote is fourteen bucks only, and ScreenFlow is a hundred bucks. You can get free trials for for ScreenFlow at least. Uh, I, I hope you you can spend fourteen dollars in Keynote. It's an amazing presentation tool. It's exactly this is the exact setup I'm using right now, and um, this is going to set you back, you know, about eleven hundred bucks. And now you can become an online instructor and and. and and, and hopefully make a killing online. Now, if you if you own a Windows machine, uh, the same setup is maybe a little bit gonna be cheaper. Uh, I just looked at the price of the software yesterday and actually PowerPoint, which is the equivalent of Keynote, is a lot more expensive, it's a hundred bucks. And Camtasia, which is the screen recording software that you use to record your screen, is uh, 300 bucks. That's very expensive, for, that's for, for Windows. The version for Mac is 99 bucks because they're in direct competition with, with ScreenFlow. So about a thousand bucks to start teaching online. If you already have a laptop and it's not too old, it's gonna be a couple hundred dollars to be able to teach online. Now, if you wanna take this to the next level because this is the basic setup, this is what you are wanna get. And this is what, I'm, what I use or what most instructors use is this setup. So you're gonna have your laptop, your, your presentation software, your screen recording or screencasting software. Uh, by the way, this software, ScreenFlow and Camtasia are, are also video editing softwares because one thing is recording your screen, the other one is editing your video. Those are two different things and some software only does the first one and then you have to get a different software to edit your video. So you can use QuickTime to record your screen but then you cannot edit your video, right? So you want to get a software that allows you to do both. And ScreenFlow and Camtasia are super easy to use. I'm gonna show you a little bit of the settings that I use later on. Not gonna go into much details because we don't have time for it, right? So, uh, webcam. You wanna watch, uh, so if you wanna enhance your setup, get a webcam, get uh, some audio equipment and some lighting equipment. Make sure that you look pretty and you're illuminated properly. Now, uh, that's gonna be about 1400 bucks. These are prices taken from Amazon.com, literally. These are US dollars taken from Amazon.com uh, yesterday. Now, uh, the best camera out there that everybody raves about for recording online courses is called the Logitech C920. They're newer versions, but this one is still, for most people, the best one is because it can record in high definition, it's 65 bucks. The uh, a great microphone is the Audio-Technica AT2020. Uh, great, fantastic uh, microphone. The Blue Yeti is a very popular one for 120 bucks, a little bit cheaper. There's a more expensive version, which is the black, or the Blue Yeti black version or black edition. The one that I'm using right now, because I'm a cheapo, is the one that was recommended by Udemy, which is called the Samsung Go Mic. That's the exact microphone I'm using right now. Hopefully I'm not chewing your ear or destroying your, your eardrums too much uh, with that microphone right now. But the quality is amazing. I don't know about uh, through like live streaming, but when you're recording a course, it's amazing. It's only 40 bucks. 
you can come to your home if you are in, in you you're, you have Amazon Prime or in a couple of days you can have that at home for 40 bucks. That's all you need. That's going to be about 1400 bucks. And now you're starting to look like a pro. My recording setup looks like this. Uh, I'm on my desk, my laptop is raised, and then the, that's my laptop, a light, I have a softbox, I have a light. Uh, by the way, the light, uh, I use daylight, uh, daylight bulbs. If you look at them, they're, they're, it says they're the they're temperature and it should be like 5100 uh, Kelvin. Anything before that is indoor lighting and is 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 yellow yellowish. You want the daylight one so it looks more professional. Now I got use a wall. Everybody has a wall. I have a wall. I hopefully you have two walls or four walls or something that you're living in. And then you need yourself. This is how I've been recording for four years of my courses. Now that you know there's more competition, you want to look better. You want to do a little bit of investment. All I've invested on is a Logitech C20 webcam and the Samsung Go Mic, and that's my setup. That's all you need to get started. Re lecture production. You guys are moving. I'm moving really fast here. I know this is probably a lot of information. I don't even know how long I've been doing this, but this is what it takes to create online courses. And you came here to learn it, and I'm delivering the goods. So keep listening. I'll try to make this recording available so you can go back and forth and don't miss a single piece of this because every single part is very important. All right, I'm taking a breather. Three, two, one, breather, let's go. Lecture, production, recording, editing, and encoding. This is a very tedious part of creating online courses, but very important to understand. So uh, choose a course recording style first. And there is seven styles that I'm gonna share with you. The Ramit Sethi style, no, that's not his style, but he's a very famous online educator as well. Talking head, whiteboard, Amir Rosic, my friend, with a whiteboard. Dan Martel here is using a flat screen TV. You got Brendan Bouchard, maybe you heard of him. Guys make millions selling online courses. He uses a paper easel, I think that's how you say it. Uh, Amy Porterfield doesn't like to be on camera, she so uses slides and voiceover over the, over the slides. My favorite online instructors of all time, who doesn't charge for his courses, and, and he's changing literally the world, so I'm, I'm really inspired by him. His name is Salman Khan from Khan Academy. He just uses a tablet, a Wacom tablet, and, a, uh, and that's it. And a voiceover over a tablet, and it's beautiful. Thousands of videos, millions of people uh, have learned from him. What I use is a combination, webcam, and slides. So I'm going to teach you my my setup, right, for recording using with uh, uh, with this combination, slides and webcam. So this is Keynote. Now, sorry if you're not you're not you're not using a Mac. I'll try to go quickly through this because it's only Mac focus. I'm teaching you what I used to teach, but similar things apply to also to Windows. So presentation settings uh, on Key, on Keynote, you want to go on wide. And this is very important, either you're using Windows or Macintosh, is that you want to record a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, and the resolution is 1280 by uh, 720 or 1920 uh, by 1080, which is 16 by 9 as aspect ratio, and both of those are standard high definition formats. You want to record your presentation on this aspect ratio, so it fits nicely, like right now, it fits nicely on your videos. Otherwise, you'll have cropping issues and black bars and stuff that you're like, you wanna look professional, this is the way to go. Next, audio. Audio is very, very important. You wanna make sure that before you start recording, you set your audio settings properly. Make sure your audio input level bars are about 80% at normal speaking voice. You can do this at uh, system settings and then just go to audio and then input. Select, not right now, as you can see, I selected the Samsung Go Mic. And uh, that's the levels that I set, okay? Very important. Screen flow, the screen flow settings. And if you're creating a new document, you could start with the 1920 by 1080. Either, either both presets, which are the 720 or 1080 are gonna be fine. Just re remember that your webcam, it records at 720, at least if you get the Logitech. Oh no, actually I think it records at 1080. Maybe it does both. In Mac, as far as I know, it records at, uh, at 720. Anyways, both of the settings in ScreenFlow are, are uh, high definition, which is great. Now, very important, very important are you listening if you're using ScreenFlow, because this is a trick that is really, really useful. 
Uh, here I'm using the Logitech C920. C920. That's actually a video captured from it. So when you go to uh, configure settings on ScreenFlow, just before you start recording, right? You click on configure settings, uh, then uh, you'll get that. But I use a trick, a trick that some people don't use, and is that I use a software called Eyeglasses. For 20 bucks, you can control a lot of parameters of your webcam. You can control the exposure, the cropping, the everything that you want, basically. That way, you can ensure that the framing, that the lighting, that everything looks great. It's 20 bucks. It's a really good investment, really, because it's going to enhance the capabilities of your existing webcam, really, by multiply them by five. Right, so that's that covers the uh, screen flow settings. Now, um, screen flow editing top tip. I'm not going to teach you how to edit video. It's pretty straightforward, but that would take a long time. But if you want to know one tip, is to press T to cut clips on. When, once you record, so let, let me go back. Once you record your your screen, your webcam on your screen, like, right when you create an online course, you're gonna get, get several layers of of video. Um, you're gonna have to edit and delete mistakes, rearrange things. Just put your cursors, whatever you want to cut a piece of video, because editing is literally just cutting. That's what you're doing. Press T on it, and boom, a cut is made. And you don't have to go go onto your menu and try to do this manually because it's going to take you forever. T for cutting on the screen flow. All right, next. We're moving along. Uh, if you're not uh, familiar with, with editing, when you edit uh, every single your webcam video and your screen video uh, uh, are recording two separate layers, you want to make sure that your webcam layer is on top of your screen layer. That way, people can see you. Otherwise, people won't see you. And then you can use T to to cut uh, your your webcam to delete it because you may don't want to you show your face all the time. This is, by the way, one tip top tip: only show your face when it makes sense. Otherwise, it's going to be distracting. So if you're addressing your students. And it's important that they see your face and then don't look at the screen. Then turn your camera on on, on screen flow. Address your students. Once you're done addressing your students, turn your camera off uh, by editing. You don't have to literally turn it off. And then they'll be able to see the screen. And you know, you'll be able to make it more interactive. Your face, the screen, your face screen, right? More interactive. Now, video encoding op uh, optimal settings. These are uh, the typical ones. Uh, probably you don't have time to write it down, but if you type that on Google, you'll be able to find out. Important thing to know about here is when you're setting up settings for encoding, you want to use H.264 or MPEG-4, 5,000 kilobits per second, 16 by 9, high definition 1080p or 720p, and the frame rate only varies. Now, if you're if you're using talking head or actual video of yourself, make sure you, you're always recording at 30 frames per second. 10 frames per second is only if you're use, showing your screen, like Amy Porterfield does, because uh, you don't need to have as many frames because there's not a lot of action happening. The advantage of this is your file will be smaller. But if you're in any in any of the mo in, if you're thinking of showing your face or your talking head at any moment, make sure you're using 30 frames per second, which is the standard video frame rate. And for audio, what I use is AAC audio at 441 kilohertz, 192 kilobits per second stereo. And this is how it looks on the settings. Not important right now, but I thought I'd mention it. Recording a schedule. Now, how do you organize yourself? How do you organize yourself to do one of these courses? Because it's a lot of work, so you must have some kind of plan. If you don't have an action plan, let me tell you what most, this is the main issue with most people that wanna try to create online courses. They get started, they don't finish. So obviously, one of those factors that we were talking about, either passion for teaching or passion for the subject, is not there. You must have the passion, the passion, to be able to do one of these things. So I'm going to give you an example of a weekly schedule for what would be a course, right? A course, a four-hour course. Uh, probably in reality, it's going to take you longer. But let's say you can put four hours a day of work to record your course. You could, and this, by the way, recording a course is like mm, like making a movie. So there is pre-production, production, and post-production. So in pre-production, you're going to create your outline and the slides. In production, you record your lectures. And in post-production, you're going to edit them, encode them, and upload them. So here we have a week, seven days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, blah, blah, blah. And so let's say you spend 12 hours creating your outline and slides. You're probably going to spend about eight hours recording your lectures and eight hours editing, encoding, and uploading. This obviously may vary depending on your, on your content, your, your experience doing this, but let's say that if you're really fast, 
and this is if you're really fast, I think you can do it this way. I, I'm very slow, unfortunately, because I put too much time on creating the slides. But if you, if you put less time, then you'll be able, maybe able to pull it off. And what you're gonna get is a four hour course in 28 eight hours of work. Remember, if you create a four hour course, it doesn't mean it's gonna take you four hours to create. Nah, nah, my friend, it's gonna take you a lot longer. It's gonna take you maybe 50 hours, sometimes 100. I have students and, and I wish I had more time to, 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 re, uh, to mention case studies because I have, obviously have hundreds of them. I got a student the other day, says me a course. He did a course on, uh, virtual reality, and he told me he spent 10 to 15 hours per hour, of course. That's insane, the amount of work the guy is putting in order to create his content. But obviously, it's going to be amazing. What do we have next? Hosting your course versus self-hosting. So self-hosting versus marketplaces. Now, let me see how are we for time here. I, I cannot really see this. Uh, oh, wow. My goodness, we're almost in the hour. Thanks so much for sticking out. Yeah, as you can see, this is teaching you how to create this is 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 not easy. But self-hosting versus marketplaces. This is very important. You listen to it because it's going to be fundamental in the success of your career as an online instructor. So please listen carefully because things are changing dramatically in the landscape of online education, and this is what you want to listen to. And I'm pressing click here. Move forward, computer. Self-hosting versus marketplaces. The pros of self-hosting is you own the email addresses of your students. You can charge as much as you want to. The maximum people people can usually charge for online courses is two thousand dollars, which maybe seems like a lot, but if you're providing a lot of value, it's not that much. That, so that means uh, you can charge up to hundred dollars per hour. Of course, that's fantastic. You keep everything, and I keep. You, I mean, you keep all the revenue except process, credit card processing fees, or you know which is great, you keep 100% of every sale. The cons is you gotta pay for hosting fees. If you're using a you know uh, course hosting platform, you're gonna have to charge, they charge you monthly fee typically. Yeah, plus they take some extra fees on, on transaction fees. So you're gonna have to pay for that. The main issue of self-hosting is that you have to do the marketing yourself. And as you're gonna see now, doing the marketing yourself, it's a lot of work. Now, marketplaces pros is that they have no hosting fees, the marketing is done for you. The cons is that the approval process can be so frustrating. The maximum you can charge, it depends on the platform, but let's say on Udemy is 50 bucks, which for a lot of instructors has been a big a big blow because they were charging like me $300 and now their courses are worth, or at least on the marketplace, 10 times less, 10 times less, my friends. Uh, and 10 hours, so you can charge an average of 10 hours, uh, $10 per hour, of course. Uh, and you, the biggest issue, uh, if you want to succeed online, and is that you don't have access to your student email addresses. That really sucks. And they keep 50% of sales because they're acting as an affiliate. Obviously, that's you than me. I don't know about uh, other platforms. but um, So advantages of self-hosting. You have more control. You're going to make more money, or at least you can charge more money if you know how to do your own marketing. The main issue is cost. Cost on hosting and on marketing costs. If you're, you're spending money on Facebook ads or ads or, or hiring people, it's going to cost you a lot more money. But the potential is way better. Plus, you don't you, you don't rely on a third-party platform. The, the disadvantages of marketplace is you have less control. You're going to be able to charge less money and probably make less money. And the advantage is that the cost, the starting costs are a lot less. Plus, you don't have to do any of the marketing. Got that? Self-hosting platforms, we got Teachable, we got Thinkific. You can do it yourself on WordPress like I've been doing, but I'm I'm moving to Thinkific. Both platforms are great. I'm very biased of Thinkific because I know personally the CEO of Greg, also the CEO, the CEO of Thinkific is an amazing guy. He lives in Vancouver like myself. I met him I met him four years ago, and, he's, and personally, I like Thinkific more, but it's up to you. Um, now, uh, Skillshare, Udemy, and that, now I'm going to plug in this. If you want to get a free month of Thinkific at the business level where you got all the features, just go to grumo.com, Thinkific. Go to their support and say uh, Grumo send me, just say G-R-U-M-O, and you're going to get uh, ability to access the business. I think they charge like 100 bucks a month for that. For a month for free, it will allow you to test the waters with self-hosting and save some money at the same time. Grumo.com Thinkific, Grumo.com slash Thinkific, Grumo. By the way, you cannot enter this 
you have to go to support. I was talking to Greg Smith this morning. You have to go to, to support and tell them that Grumo is sent you, okay? And you'll get a free month off. Fantastic, bombastic. Let's move on. How to get your first two days? So, so you create this amazing course and you think you're gonna kill it. <laughs> Wait a moment. Let's go back to this picture. So the whole picture says that in order to be successful, these four things must work. So you really have to be good at marketing. So getting students is being really good at marketing. If you go to a platform like Udemy, they do the marketing for you. So that piece you don't have to worry about. But as we mentioned, there's some disadvantages. Now, marketing, uh, there's an acronym, it's called AIDA, -A -A -A, which basically means uh, attention, interest, desire, and action. So this is what marketing is. You wanna create attention, people are gonna be interested, they're gonna desire your product, and they're gonna take action and buy your stuff. Now, there's many, many ways of doing this, and it can be extremely frustrating to learn it. I've been learning for the last four months from some of the top marketers in the world, and I'm blown away of all the ways you can make money online and sell courses. I'm just gonna teach you one way, okay guys? One way that you can sell courses online. So pay attention, because this way is the most powerful way of getting your students. It does take a lot of work, but once you have the machine in place, my friends, you can kill it selling stuff. And by the way, I'm using this machine right now as I speak, uh, but I've seen it used by all the top instructors out there use this system. It's called the webinar funnel. If you don't know what a funnel is, it's just a set of strategies to get people to build trust over a series of steps so people are more likely to buy. If you don't use a funnel, let's say you have your, your courses like I do right now, <laughs> and, and, and they just land on a, on a page and there's nothing, just, just your courses, you're not gonna sell peanuts. If you wanna multiply what you're getting right now by 10 or 20 or 100, you need to build a funnel. All right, so the funnel looks like this. First of all, you need to drive traffic, Pay traffic is, is the fastest way, Facebook, YouTube, Google Ads. You're gonna do, send that to a landing page. You can build that in ClickFunnels or lead pages. You're gonna collect an email address, but you're driving traffic with a little, what they call a ethical bribe. You're gonna give them a, a little present, a gift, boom. It's gonna be a PDF, a report, an ebook, or a mini course. And in exchange of that present, they give you the email address. And now you can keep following up on them and hopefully not bother them too much. Uh, obviously, they can subscribe if they don't like what you're doing. But the thing is that right after you give them the gift, you're going to send them to a webinar, a go-to webinar, uh, webinar like this, um, the one I'm doing right now, Hangouts. Hangouts, Google Hangouts is free. Go to webinar is not free, but it's a lot more powerful. If you want to do this seriously, go to webinar is the way to go. And there's other like webinar jam and your options. But anyway. On the webinar, you're gonna you're gonna give them a lot of value, teach them a lot of stuff, like I'm doing right now. And at the end, boom, you sell them something. There's a whole strategy on how to do webinars. There's actually something called the perfect webinar script. If you want to learn more about this funnels and stuff like that, you can go to digitalmarketer.com or clickfunnels.com. Uh, just type uh, Ryan Dice or Russell Brunson. Or anyways, these people know what they're doing. Uh, doing webinars is an art form. And uh, once you, you, when you get better at it, by the way, this is my first webinar, so I'm probably sucking and I'm not following any of the steps, but webinar is the best way. It's the, just it's like a live presentation, but you're selling at the end, right? And then you sell them your course. You can use some card, Stripe, you know, some kind of payment system, and they buy your course or whatever you're selling. But typically, in this case, it's gonna be your online course. And if you do it this way, you can actually charge more than 20 bucks. You should be able to charge anywhere from 100 to 2,000 bucks this way. So you wanna get really good at this way if you wanna make money. If you don't wanna make money, then mm, don't do it. Uh, free traffic, so there's another way, free traffic. This takes a little more time, but this is uh, your blog a lot and you get found on so search social on YouTube. That's gonna, then on your blog, you're gonna have a form, an opt-in form, you collect the email addresses, and as soon as they collect the email addresses, guess what happened? Boom, they go to your email list. Your email list is the holy grail of an online business. If you don't have one today, you're gonna suffer in, uh, in making money online. You must collect email addresses they, and of course, they have to opt in. And, and now what you're gonna do is provide a lot of value. You can use MailChimp, PayWeber, ConvertKit, ActiveCampaign to collect all these email, email addresses. But what you're gonna do next is a sequence of emails where you're gonna warm up this audience. You're gonna provide a lot of value. So email once and two and three, send them to videos, to content, to stuff. You're warming up for them to eventually get uh, to the webinar where you're gonna sell them, right? 
So this is the, the, the other side of the funnel through, through free traffic. There's a million variations of this. I'm just telling you the most effective one. Now, uh, there's a very important factor here to understand. There's different types of traffic. There's cold traffic, warm traffic, and hot traffic. And what I mean by that is cold traffic is people that don't know you yet. And typically paid advertising is people just, you interrupt and they see an ad. They're like, oh, I'm annoyed. Oh, oh maybe it's interesting. But they don't know anything about you. You haven't built trust with them. So what happens is that now you have to build trust really fast on your landing page. And that's why those landing pages usually are, I call them chorizo pages, are so long because they're trying to build trust in just one page. And it takes, you know, it's, it's going to take you 20 minutes to read that thing in order for you to trust that person. So, um, or you got warm traffic. People found you. You didn't interrupt them. They found you. You had very interesting content on YouTube. YouTube is a great strategy, by the way. Put a lot of free videos there related to your subject. And some people will like you. And then you send them from YouTube to, an, to your opt-in form. And then to email list, to the email sequence, and to the webinar. Right? Social too. You can have a Facebook fan page, uh, which allows you to collect, not collect email addresses, but collect a lot of fans and then promote promote content, right? So warm traffic. Now, what you wanna do, and the magic, if you wanna just take one thing away from this, is that online you can build trust automatically. But right? because with email automation, you can through a series of email emails build that trust people get to know you so you can convert them from warm to hot hot means now they trust you they like you they're interested you've gone through the whole aida thing right another way to take action you take them to the webinar you explain them more stuff by this time through the funnel only the people that were really interested are going to be at the end of the funnel so don't expect 100 people you send 100 people and 100 people come out of the other end no the whole thing is you you warm them up to this email sequence right now Next, uh, okay, so uh, this is interesting. Like I said, if uh, on the landing page right here, what it's doing, if you're sending them directly to, an, uh, to a landing page and then to the webinar, the landing page is what is doing the warming up. But the, the land, a great sales page, let's put it through a sales page, is gonna have proof, authority, testimonials, uh, value, uh, bonuses, everything for people to you know, to get to the, okay, sorry, the, the sales, sales page should be somewhere else, but anyway, a landing page is something that has to be really well done in order to convert well if you're sending cold traffic, because cold traffic doesn't convert well, and warm traffic is easier to convert, right? ADA, so again, attention, we're talking about marketing, so attention, you're getting attention, and, and that attention, let's say somebody saw a Facebook ad, it's like, oh, I mean, you got my attention, well, okay. Then they go to your landing page. Oh, that sounds interesting. Interesting. I ah, D. Oh my goodness, this is really cool. Hmm, I'm gonna get a present and maybe I learn other stuff. Desire and action. Action happens at the very, very end. Well, you have action here to give you the email address, and you have action here to buy your product. A I D A. The words that will make you a load of cash. <laughs> All right. Self-hosting versus marketplaces. All right, and I think we're getting to the end. My God, time flies, time flies. Okay, so thanks guys for being here. Uh, Self-hosting versus marketplaces, 10 hour course. Let's say you're selling a 10 hour course. I think I wanted to put a, this is what's gonna happen. This is the reality of today. If you go to a marketplace, you wanna sell your 10 hour course, you're probably gonna be selling it for 30 or, or 50 bucks. If you do self-hosting, you're gonna be able to sell, to sell your course for 10 times more at least. Now, which one do you think you should go to? If you're lazy, then go to a marketplace. You can use a dual strategy, which is great, but you won't be able to charge as much, as I think, as, as much value that you're providing on your online course. So you have to get good at online courses. So how do you get good at online courses? You have to be really good at marketing. If you wanna get really good at marketing, bada bim, bam, boom, bam, you have to go here, a groomo.com webinar right now, because that's the next webinar. What I'm doing is creating a webinar. We're gonna teach you next what it takes to become a really good marketer and sell your online courses. And by the way, if you don't get this piece right, there is no way you're gonna be a successful online instructor. So on top of all the variables that I said, this one is probably the most important. You have to create a great online course. You have to become really good at marketing and understanding funnels. And for that, next Tuesday, I think, uh, we're going to do for the first time we're going to do this is is a, uh, a webinar. We're going to teach you the many strategies. We're going to dig a little bit deeper on the many strategies of how to market your online courses successfully. 
groomo.com slash webinar. Only 25 spots. 25 spots only because this is the first one and it's a test webinar, so we don't want to just bring a lot of people. So the first 25 people get in. If you don't act right now, act right now, then you won't be able to get in. So if you want to learn more about online marketing, online marketing, by the way, it sounds like such a boring thing, but and but it gets really exciting once, especially once you, you understand the mechanics of it. And if you want to be successful on, uh, teaching online and not depending on marketplaces, you have to understand marketing, whether you like it or not. So you may, may as well like it because it's not going to go away. So if you want to do so, go to grumo.com slash webinar. And that's it, folks. Uh, the gift. Okay. Somebody's asking me about the gift. So the gift is a magical gift that is going to show up in your inbox later today for only those that stuck with me up to here. How do I do this? Well, magic. It's got to webinar magic. I can know, I have the ability to know if you stayed up to here or not. And if you did, you will automatically get a present. And it's a very unique present because it's a present that is going to allow you to move forward which is very important because at the end of all of this is like, why am I learning this? I want you to take action, really. If you want to create an online course, you have to take action. So this is going to put some fire in your ass and get you to uh, take action, right? Uh, finally, all I want to say is peace, love, and and cookies. Cookie, 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 cookie. Questions and answers. Anybody has any questions and answers? You know, by the way, I don't know how this question and answer works on, on GoToWebinar. So if I don't see your questions, eh, sorry. Uh, by in the meantime, you just can go to groomo.com webinar and subscribe for the amazing next presentation where we'll teach you how to market your courses so you can actually have a chance of succeeding in this new world of online teaching. And we can help you reach a lot of people and make a difference. Right, so mm, there you go. Any questions? Any questions? Questions, questions, questions. I can hear you. Oh my God, there's a million questions. <laughs> I didn't even know. Oh my God, sorry guys. Sorry, I, uh, uh, let, me, let me try to answer a couple of questions here. Mm, there's a million questions. All right, uh, okay. Oh, cool. How can I help other overcome the activation? How can I help others overcome the activation energy? Um, well, let me tell you, that's, that is the trickiest part of online education, how to get people to take action. So obviously your course has to be great, but if, you can use quizzes to incentivate people. You can use drip uh, lectures. So only release lectures once a week or something, something like that. You can do that with... Uh, with platforms like Thinkific, where they only, or, or you can say you only get to see the next lecture if you finish this lecture, something like that. There's many ways of gamifying the whole experience in order to to uh, end up doing what you want. And the reality, and, and, and although it may say, seem sad, is that uh, even if you do all the tricks in the world, some people won't, won't act, act at the end because that's how the world works. There's nothing you can do. Some people just don't take action. You, your work your job is to do the best. Don't be disappointed if people don't get to the end of your courses. The important thing is that those that get to the end of the courses, you're actually making a difference on them. And I'm telling you, after five years teaching, there's hundreds of people that have written to me that I met in person that I've been able to make a difference in their lives. And that alone is worth the price of admission, right? Is there a different URL to use? I'm not sure what is what. How can how can as we students help you as someone who has helped someone? Oh, somebody wants to help me. Well, go to groomo.com slash webinar, right? I'm doing a horrible job of, of, of selling my next webinar, by the way. Uh, and, and, and just to be 100 transparent, because I never done this, if you're doing a webinar, which you will have to do if you want to sell online courses, there is a script that you should follow. People say it's called the perfect webinar script. And basically what you do at the end is get people so excited that they just they just open their wallets and they throw, 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 throw $100 at your face. Uh, I'm not a hard seller and I don't like to do that. But the reality is that you have to, to be able to learn how to sell if you want to make money online. It's just, this is the reality of life. Uh, on that webinar, what we're going to do is, is, is we're going to present you the next course that we're doing, 
which is an amazing course, by the way. And probably, I hope it's going to be the best course in the world. And I'm not kidding on, uh, on marketing online courses. Uh, because I'm telling you, I've been doing this for five years. I'm ready to go the extra mile to make this course just mind-blowingly good. Uh, great stuff. Hey, Phil Lebiner is here in the house. What is your Thinkific website? I'm actually migrating all my courses to Thinkific. All of them are living on Udemy and on my side. And now, because I'm so in love with Thinkific and Greg is such an amazing guy, Greg, Greg Smith has an amazing story. He used to sell online courses and then he created a platform himself with his brother and here in Vancouver. And uh, basically, I tested both Teachable and Thinkific. And I, I say hands down, I would go with Thinkific. Uh, I may sound like a, a biased uh, reason, but I, I actually did. I tested them both. And I'm going to migrate all my courses to Thinkific. I learned a lot. URL doesn't work. Oh, fantastic. Oh, no. Your average course of 30, 18,000. So you made $270,000. Actually, the amount that I made, because I sold them on Udemy and on my own website, it's about 400,000 bucks in the last five years US, which is not bad, but for somebody who has created only nine, nine courses, has done no marketing whatsoever. Uh, basically buy a house with what I made online, teaching online, so that's pretty cool. What automation platform do I do you use? I use now I'm using ConvertKit, but uh, if you want to go, do you want to go the next mile? You want to do this seriously? Go to use Infusionsoft. A lot of people hate it, but it's extremely powerful. Now, if you go that only go that route when you're actually making money online because it's very expensive and it takes forever to set up, but it's a super powerful platform. Uh, what do you think of the webcam with the MacBook? Okay, this is a good question. What do you think of the webcam with the MacBook Pro? It's shite. And I don't know if it's my, my computer or new, but let me tell you, it gets worse every time. If you want to look somewhat professional, please do invest on a, on a webcam and the Logitech C920 is the one you want to get. What lights do I use? I mentioned, you mentioned some the bulbs. No, they, they, that. you can just, uh, I could put some links, but basically type lighting kit lighting kit on Amazon and don't pay more than 200 bucks for a lighting kit. And you, you all you need is two soft boxes and that's it. And you're more than set up to go. You just went silent. Uh, that's not good. I'm enjoying it. Yes, I can hear you now. We can hear you. Me pregunto. That's in Spanish. Sorry, I cannot. If I answer in Spanish, nobody is going to understand. Is Udemy a good platform to test our first online course? Yes. Udemy is still an amazing platform and I love them. And I've been to their headquarters and I know everybody there and they're amazing people. And really they're on a mission to create the best online education platform in the world. But it is at the end, it is a marketplace, right? So in a marketplace, you're subject to the whims of the marketplace and you have less control. And as I mentioned, less control, not, not ability to charge as much. So there's certain restrictions. However, to test a course, if you don't want to do all the marketing effort, Udemy is probably, hands down, the best place you can do so. You can either put a free course and test it. You can charge 20 bucks for a course and see what happens. And there's many strategies you can use to succeed on Udemy. So go ahead, by all means, do so. Now, don't do, unfortunately for people like me, I got nine courses there, which were anywhere from 100 to 300 bucks. Now, all those courses are basically slashed uh, their price 10 times. So not so happy about that. Sales are about similar because, as you may know, Udemy has been selling courses on flash sales weekly for the last five years and basically educating people to pay only 20 to 30 bucks anyways. So it's not really affected my sales that much, but it's it's that's the main issue, right? Uh, how can you have a student response C be seen by their fellow students and Facebook page? Okay, this depends on the platform, but typically either on Udemy or Thinkific or Teachable, there's a comment section where everybody that comments on the lecture will be able to see each other's comments. Udemy has done a great job of that and they have the Q&A section. Uh, obviously, like you mentioned here, a Facebook page is a great place. The problem is that Facebook page is not where the course is hosted. A Facebook page is a great addition and probably a must addition, a Facebook or Slack, 
to build a community of students that can help each other. And you should offer that if you want to be serious about really providing and serving your students. It's not just the course itself, it's also opening a, a private or a secret Facebook group where you invite all your students so they can help each other. What can I do with a solid one hour chunk to myself to take action immediately on these ideas you saw us here today? Okay, that's a great question, action. You know what? I'm gonna tell you, if for, for those that are stuck in here, how you can take action today. And uh, this is how you take action. The core of creating an online course is creating lectures. You gotta get back, you have to get good at it, whether you like it or not. Get good at creating lectures. So download all the software I told you, Screenflow, Camtasia, and Keynote or, or PowerPoint. Use the free versions if you don't spend the money. Do that today. Take action today. And record a five-minute lecture today teaching something that you're, that you're passionate about today. Do that. Record one five-minute lecture today. Edit it. Upload it to YouTube. As private if you want, as if you're embarrassed to do so. You don't have to show your face, but I recommend you do so. You, so you record your webcam. Do that today. Record just one lecture. Can you record five minutes of video teaching something you're passionate about? Let me, of course you can. Have you, some, has, have you ever taught anybody something that you were passionate about and it took you more than five minutes? All right, that is online teaching. The only thing is you're going to put that on digital format. So, yes, the, fir the first, first thing you can do in order to start teaching online is Record yourself on camera app at least for five minutes and get used to the feeling, the pain of doing this and also the benefits. Because this is what Sam and Khan did when he started like five years ago. He recorded a 10 minute video every day, every day for years. And, and, and of course, he got super good at it. Just go to Sam and just type Sam and Khan or Khan Academy on YouTube and you'll be able to see one of the best online instructors in the world in action for free, right? And the only way you get good at it is, is at, 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 at um, how do you call that? Not mastering, mastering the art of creating a lecture. Uh, that's not the step number one. And then you can also, you know, marketing and all that stuff. But you can, that's the action step that I recommend that you take. Boom. There's more questions here, and I'm really uh, very, very thankful for all the people that are sticking. I'm really sorry that this, is, this took longer than, than an hour. I hope you're getting a lot of value. And uh, like I said, this is the first time I do a webinar, so probably I sucked a little bit, and you don't understand my accent. Uh, hopefully you do. How is Skillshare? I never tried Skillshare, and um, I, their pricing structure is different, so they basically they, they add up all the minutes that have been watched in a month, and then they split the revenue among all the instructors. On top of that, they chart, they see how many minutes people watch. It's more complex, and uh, you could do well. Some people do well. I never tried it. It's just another option. Is the link groomo.com webinar a registration page? for how to double your students? Yes, if you go to groomo.com webinar, it's the registration page to register to the next webinar. And you wanna do that quickly because the problem is if you don't, uh, it's gonna get sold out. And it's, it's true, we don't want a lot of people because we're actually, this is a test. <laughs> this is a test and we don't wanna really uh, bomb it too badly. Uh, okay, more questions, more questions. How many people are on your team? In my team, there's about three people. Uh, it's me, myself, and I. Uh, three amazing people. I know them very, very well. And eventually, I may hire other people, which would be very smart. Would be the first, first person you should hire if you uh, want to not suffer too much doing everything. It's a virtual assistant, and that's a whole discussion but, uh, altogether. A virtual assistant can save your life. Where can I meet others who are on a similar journey and who are excited as I am in your community? It is easier to work when I know there are others swimming in the same direction. Very, very, very smart. Where can you do that? Mm, well, we do have a Facebook group, but it's not, I don't think it's open. <laughs> it's called Market Your Course. Uh, but um, that's a good question. I, you know, I'll, I'll send you guys an email if you guys want to be part of our community um, because I didn't think about it. <laughs> I'm an idiot. I should have thought about that. Uh, that I should send you to a community where you guys can say, you know, uh, help each other. 
Miguel, I got the time time. You just will the webinar be available after the fact? Of course, will be available after the fact because I'm recording it. Oh no, I oh yes, I didn't forget press recording. So you're lucky. It's your lucky day. Uh, awesome answer. Where can we meet? Ba ba ba. More questions. More questions. Is good. Uh, do you think? Do you think it's possible to create an online course about food and its preparation? The answer is yes. You can create a course. I mean, anything you can teach in four to 10 hours, yeah, it's a course in itself, okay? So can you teach, can you spend four hours being very, very passionate about teaching people how to do food and its preparation? Yes. Now you'll use a different shooting technique because slides and webcam probably not the best uh, sub, you know, methods of, of shooting a food course. You're gonna have to get a camera it could be your own iPhone to start with, but you could get a DSLR like a Canon, uh, you know, 70D or something like that, and a couple of lenses. And this is more complex in terms of production. And specifically, when you want to shoot food, you want to make sure it looks beautiful. So you, know, you probably want to take a course on video production to just to learn the fundamentals of it. But yes, of course, you can create a course on absolutely anything, right? Now, whether people are buying it or not. As I said, it depends on many, many factors. It depends if you're a great instructor, if you're passionate about it, if you if you know your market, if you don't research, if if you know how to do marketing. Anything can be sold if if those factors are met in any subject: knitting, cooking, baking, running, yogaing, uh, jumping. There's a guy that made millions. Listen to this: a guy that's made millions teaching people how to jump higher. Jump higher, okay. I want to jump higher, and this guy makes millions. All right, well, he created a course, online course, and he taught people the strategies that he is used to help NBA, and of course, NBA players, basketball players love this, to jump higher. There you go. So if, if you can make a course on how to jump higher, you can create a course on absolutely anything. Um, what else do we have here? Okay, so guys, I think I, let me see if I have more questions here. What do you think would be more engaging for teaching languages to others? The teacher's face or a groom style animation? So, okay, the question is, what is more engaging? Showing your face or an animation? Let me tell you something. Doing an animation, it's a lot of work. And both, if you hire somebody, okay, if you want to hire a studio, it's going to cost you a lot of money, number one. So if you, if you don't know if it's going to sell, don't go the animation route. If you do it yourself, I have a course called How to Create Awesome Online uh, demo videos or how to create awesome demo videos that is a 10 hour course and you can take it and you'll see how difficult it is to create good animations bad animations is very easy to create the same as anything like creating bad courses is very easy but if you want to do something good that people can actually enjoy it's going to be a lot of effort i would definitely go the route of not animation uh, just show your face and teach people uh, how to uh, learn languages with with slides because animation is very, very, very expensive to do. Now, if you could afford animation, that's a different story. Then I would say animation is maybe probably one of the best ways of teaching. And if you go to YouTube and there's, 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 I'm going to recommend for you a couple of channels here, but if you go to ASAP Science or Minute Physics. Uh, they have amazing educational animations. Another one is called In a Nutshell. Amazing YouTube channel that teaches you absolutely anything that you want with animation. The thing is, in animation, you can teach a lot more, a lot faster. So in 10 minutes, you get to learn a lot. The problem is that it's unlikely you can charge a lot for a 10-minute video, regardless of how much money that, uh, so how much uh, value that you provide. Thanks for all the useful information. Thank you for everybody sticking here. We're at the one hour and a half, over one hour. Are you still the CEO of Grumo or have you sort of distributed your team to be managed by another? This is not related to this, but to answer the question, yes, I am the CEO of Grumo and I have a distributed team. Uh, I have a, also an online course, which is called How to Create an awesome, oh, awesome Lifestyle Business, where I teach everything, all the secrets. Secret, well, there won't be secrets once you get the course. Uh, but basically, it's a 10-hour course, 100 lectures where I teach how I've started this company, how I systematize everything to the point where today I have a profitable business creating videos where I basically don't do much. To be honest, I just hire very, very smart people. They're all 
contractors. I'm the sole owner and employee of the company, and they work from all around the world. It is a distributed team. So to answer your question, yes, I'm still the CEO and sole owner of this company. I just work with really, really smart, awesome people. And uh, I'm really happy that they work with me and they've stuck with me, some of them, for very long. And, and building a team is one of the best skills you could ever learn, definitely. <clears throat> me, myself, and I, Miguel, I got the time wrong. Okay, guys, I think we're pretty much good. Thanks for all the useful information. Ba -ba -ba. Oh, my God, that's a big question. How do you think I can make it easier for my future self to actually stick to a schedule of following through this hectic journey in my life? Do you say to yourself, what do you say to yourself when you're having an off day but stuff needs to get done? This is more about mindset, my friends. And mindset would be an entire course, which I'm not an expert on. But as a guy that is reaching almost 40 years of age and I've gone through lots of ups and downs in his life, uh, I mean, I mean, my life has been pretty easy, but like everybody, you have up and downs. And not every day you wake up in the morning saying, yeah, I'm going to take over the world. Yeah, I'm the best in the world. Sometimes, uh, I mean, I think I, I think I never got diagnosed, but I probably think I, I suffered depression for the first 30 years of my life. So there you go. Um, and then one day I got braces, fixed my teeth, and I got a lot more confidence because my teeth really sucked. So so yeah it is hard there's many many factors that affect your confidence your ability to uh to you know what can you do to get things done right and uh, that is a very very important topic and to create an online course yes you definitely need that type of motivation when you're sitting hours in front of a computer trying to teach people and change the world you need that motivation so what do i do uh, there's uh, James Ad Twitcher, a great blogger, uh, has, has recommendations. In your life, you need to find the balance, and the balance is by uh, spending time. Uh, uh, you have to sleep, eat well, socialize, uh, work, and play. So those things. Make sure you do those. If you're missing any of those things, you're missing sleep. If you're not doing things that you enjoy, if you're not uh, socializing, if you're not eating well that is gonna affect your ability to be motivated. So if you're not motivated and you're not suffering some kind of chronic uh, depression or something like that, then probably one of those five factors is, is needs work, right? If you're not working in something that's passionate, if you're not getting out, uh, if you're not sleeping well, if you're not drinking water, if you're not eating well, your, your ability to, um, you know, to, to, to be motivated is gonna, be, is gonna decrease. So there you go. Uh, the tricky part is, is to make sure that you find a balance in life. And I'm not a psychologist, so I'm probably not the best person to answer that question. And uh, what else do we have? Uh, any last influential resources that you've personally recommend that we can follow up with as soon as this webinar is over? Okay, so influential resources. Related to online courses, let me think about this. Um, influential resources i mean I'm, I'm i'm really passionate about teaching so influential resources check this guy his name is richard Feynman. he's one of the most now he doesn't he died but he worked in the manhattan project uh during the second world war Richard Feynman was has been one of the top physicists of our generation and also one of the best instructors of all time he was teaching physics, which is very hard, and nuclear physics, and uh, he made it entertaining as hell. So if you want to be inspired about being an online teacher, check Richard Feynman, or Feynman. I don't know how you spell it, Richard Feynman, one of the greatest physicists of our generation, not our generation, but of, the, of this century. Uh, check out Sam and Khan and Khan Academy to be inspired by a great online instructor. In terms of resources, I mentioned most of them in this course. You know, uh, sign up for Thinkific uh, say, or sign up for Udemy today is free and upload a course, record a lecture. And um, if you stick, stick like I say, I'm, I'm going to send you a, a gift. Uh, the gift is basically to get your ass into action. So um, stick on your... Uh, Look for, for the gift on your inbox. So later on today, when I get some time, I need to get some sleep. I went to sleep very late. Once I get some uh, some some rest, I'll send you the gift, and the answer will be there. Thanks so much for being here. You guys are awesome. You're the best in the world. I'm so happy that...
courses, you model them in your own presentation. Uh, I don't see your names, but whoever is asking these questions, thank you so much. I don't know how to use Quota Webinar, uh, but it's been amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. You're awesome. We've way beyond the. Uh, I'm amazing. There's still 40 people here. This is my first webinar. I'm going to just pat myself in the back and say, Miguel, you're awesome. You did a great job. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And I'm going to turn my camera on so you can see my ugly, ugly. No, I'm, I'm a beautiful man. I'm a beautiful man. Take my face. Can you see it right now? Yeah. So thanks so much for tuning in at, uh, in this webinar. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a lot. And most importantly, I hope you were inspired to take action and to change the world. I'm tuning now. Bye bye. Bye bye America. Bye. Blah 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 blue 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 blah blah blee 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 blue blah blah blee 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 blue blee 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 blee